In this video, we're going to show you how to make an acceleration versus time graph. Again, we're taking a subway train that starts from rest, accelerates for the first 60 seconds at 0.5 meters per second square, then it maintains that speed for the next 240 seconds, and then it slows down back to zero, decelerating at one meter per, or minus one meter per second square for 30 seconds. So what does that graph look like? Well, for the first 60 seconds, it's accelerating at 0.5 meters per second square, so it should look like this, and this would be 0 0.5. Then for the next 240 seconds, it maintains the same speed. Acceleration is zero, so this graph then drops down to zero and stays at zero until we reach this point right there. Then at that point, it decelerates. So acceleration is now negative, a minus one meter per second squared. And so it goes down like this, cross, and like that, and and come up here, it's minus one meter per second square for 30 seconds. So that was, that's what an acceleration versus time graph looks like. Now, what does the slope represent of this graph? Well, the slope would be defined as the change in acceleration over time, also written as delta A over delta time. So the change in acceleration over time. And of course, that would be the change in acceleration over time. Now, here you can see that the slope is zero. That means acceleration doesn't change. Acceleration is constant. Here, the slope doesn't change. It's zero. That means acceleration, again, doesn't change. And here, the slope is zero. That means acceleration doesn't change. So in each case, the acceleration is constant. Here, it's 0 0.5. There, it's zero. There, it's minus one. But it's constant. So here, we can say that, in this case, the slope is equal to that is equal to zero. But what if the slope was like this? then you can see that the acceleration is changing and then it would not be zero. But in this case, in our example, we don't have that. What about the area need to curve? We have an area here, we have zero area there, and we have zero, and we have some area there. Notice that this area is negative. Well, the area underneath the curve represents the velocity. And notice here, since the train is accelerating, as the time goes by, as the second sticks by, you have more and more and more area. That means the velocity is increasing until you reach 60 seconds. So the velocity obtained between here and there is equal to the area underneath this curve. The area would be 60 times 0.5 or 30, and the units are meters per second. So the area in this case represents that the train went from 0 to 30 meters per second. Now, since we're not adding or subtracting any area, that means from there to there, the velocity doesn't change. It stays at 30 meters per second. And then here we have negative area. That means the velocity is decreasing. As time goes by, we have more and more negative area. So the velocity becomes less and less and less. Again, the area here would be 30 times 1, or actually I should say 30 times negative 1, or minus 30 meters per second. So that means we go from 30 meters per second back to zero because when we add this area, the zero area, and this area together, the net area is zero, which means when we get back to this point, there's no velocity of train is standing still again. So in, a, in an acceleration versus time graph, the slope of the curve represents the change in the acceleration over time, which in this case is zero, and the area underneath the curve, this area and that area, represents the velocity obtained during that motion, and you can see that the total area in this case adds up to zero at the end of 330 seconds. And that's how you graph an acceleration versus time graph. In the next video, we're going to take the three graphs and compare them side by side. And that way you can see how you can draw general conclusions from a graph that's, that either represents distance versus time, velocity versus time, or acceleration versus time. For a case like this where we have an object that starts from rest, increases, accelerates, maintains its speed, and then decreases at the end. What does it look like on the three graphs side by side? Stay tuned for the next video and you'll see.